Welcome everyone to a new episode of What If Cars. In this series, I'm going to release my sick fantasies and also take your requests. By using this car building game as a tool, I'm going to create fictional and alternative universe What If Cars. It's one of the most famous stories from American automotive history, the spectacular rise and fall of Tucker. I won't bother you too much with the details because I have bothered you before with this story. In short, a man by the name of Preston Tucker wanted to take advantage of the exploding immediate post-war car market by offering a revolutionary vehicle with a huge emphasis on safety, a theme that was largely ignored by the established car industry. He managed to build up a massive hype around his car of the future that would incorporate many radical features and technological advancements. Around the release of what became the Tucker 48, nicknamed the Torpedo, word on the street was that Tucker was a fraud and promised big things but had nothing to back it up. The SEC started to take an interest in Tucker and investigated the new company. And although Tucker managed to successfully defend himself in court, showing that there was no fraudulent things going on, the damage was already done, as the media told a different story. And with that, the Tucker company vanished at the same speed it initially managed to create the hype. Tucker then tried on and off to revive his car building dreams, but without success. And he passed away in the mid-50s. Around 50 cars were made in the process and are well documented. Some of them are in museums, others in private collections. But what if the Tucker Corporation managed to succeed, not hampered by any trials and tribulations? What if Tucker still existed today. This video follows the same basic recipe as the what if video about Edzo I made a few weeks before. I decided to make four cars, each of which are from a different decade. In order to get a grip on what these cars would look like, we first need to take a look at the key design elements that made the original Tucker so unique. There are quite a few design elements that make the Tucker so unique and can be used as a framework for our designs. Overall, the car is not overly sporty, but it does look rather lean, fast and lithe. Certainly not like a bathtub on wheels. Extremely noticeable is of course the third center headlight. That's one of the styling ingredients to keep in mind. The front bumper is rather unique. It has two levels and kind of looks like a sharp wings sticking out. Also notice the grille pattern in the two levels, which is interesting considering the fourth element, the car is rear-engined with a grille pattern on the rear and six exhaust pipes. And last but not least, I'll see if I can throw in some fastback magic in one of the designs for good measure. And so with this in mind, I can present you four cars. Can I get a drum roll? The Tucker Corporation presents four cars that each represent the highlights of a rich history of a company that is always one step ahead of the rest. The originator, the innovator, the industry leader, the Tucker Corporation. If Tucker would have followed the general American car industry, that would mean that every three years or so, Tucker would have to redesign their cars in order to keep up with the rest. The first redesign would come around in the early 1950s, and so what would a new Tucker look like? Well, with some imagination and some Photoshop fun, I created two quick and dirty designs. Think of a 1949 Ford, you know, with a shoebox force that had a chrome centerpiece in the grille. Replace that with a third headlight and you get the idea. Or what about the other aircraft-nosed car, Studebaker? I think you have to think in that direction to get an answer. But let's move forward. It's 1956 and it's an important year. Chevy took the market by storm with its Tri-5 Chevys. The mid-50s Fours looked better than ever and Chrysler was catching up with the million dollar lookers. Dual headlights and soaring fins were yet to come, but chrome ornamentation and two or even tritone paint was getting the norm. And in this environment, the Tucker Corporation presents the Tucker 56 Torpedo. Although internally known as the Model 56, the nickname Torpedo was rejected at first because of the Second World War, but slowly embraced and adopted in the course of the 1950s and is now an official model name. 
The car is quintessentially mid-1950s, but with loads of futuristic safety gimmicks. For starters, the car is still rear-engined. The Boxer 6 of the original Tucker 48 is gone, replaced by an outsourced General Motors V8, a Chevy small block, the 265. Interesting detail is its unusually tall greenhouse in times when longer, wider and lower was getting the norm. This was, according to Preston Tucker, to help overall visibility. Side view mirrors on both sides of the car are standard. And as an industry first, the car came standard with three-point seat belts, soft material dashboard and a so-called Warn-O-Matic, a speed controller. A buzzer would go off if you would exceed the pre-selected speed, reminding you to slow down. The front end is an evolution of the original Tucker 48. Hooded headlights were the rage at the moment. The horizontal grille is a fake. Behind the chrome grille pattern we find a body panel that is just painted black since the engine is mounted in the rear. The bumper follows a similar shape as the original and is divided in three parts. The bumper of a 1958 Mercury gives you uh, a slight sense of what this bumper would look like in real life. In the center we find, of course, the third turning headlight, now fully allowed in all states united. The third headlight has two chrome bars sticking out of it on either side, mimicking the design of an airplane's propeller as one of the many references to the aircraft industry. On the side we find bright work and a two-tone paint job that mimics the shape of the front and rear fenders of the original Tucker 48. Once again, the car features suicide doors, like the original. And on the rear quarter panel we find the torpedo model name, as well as a functional air scoop to cool down the rear mounted engine. The rear is simple yet blunt. If you look closely at a Tucker 48 you'll see that both the rear grille and the rear bumper are massive. And so is the case on the Tucker 56. A rear grille pattern provides enough air for the engine. A proud Tucker badge is displayed on top of this grille. And below the blunt bumper we find the six tailpipes. Tail lights are placed within a chromed and stainless steel trim piece. White backup lights come standard in the name of safety, as they were often an option during these years if they were an option at all. And last but not least, Preston himself came up with a new idea. He figured that an extra brake light mounted on the rear could improve safety and increase braking visibility. And after much fiddling around, one of his designers proposed to integrate a third brake light in the roof of the car, just above the rear window. This design was approved, and this third brake light came, of course, standard. For the 1960s, the Tucker Corporation presents something entirely new and exciting. The 1968 Tucker Torpedo Coupe. All throughout time, Tucker only made two and four door sedans, but by the mid 60s, plans were made to offer an additional model to better compete with the ever more diverse car market. The Torpedo Coupe is based on a regular model 68 Torpedo, but marketed as a powerful personal luxury car. It had to be a sleek, sexy car with a massive fastback roof. Designers took inspiration of the AMC Marlin and the Dodge Charger, both from 1966. And the car is similar in its styling like the 1968 Ford Torino GT Fastback. Safety made stylish and sexy. Although the car looks sporty and is very powerful thanks to its outsourced and upgraded Cadillac 427 V8 engine, it's not a muscle car by any means. More like a GT car or a gentleman sports cruiser, directly competing to the Ford Thunderbird, Buick Riviera and the Cadillac Eldorado. All the safety equipment, as mentioned with the 50 Tucker, comes standard on this car. And on top of that, new for 68 is an experimental crash cushion system. It's an innovative system that is able to deploy what can be described as a bag full of air from the collapsible steering wheel in case of an accident to prevent severe head injury. Industry leading, but time will tell if this system functions properly. Underneath, things are just as advanced. Fully independent suspension all around, disc brakes all around, and the first American production car to ride on radial tires for better grip and secure handling. The front end is styled very much like a 1966 Dodge Charger, a full loop around chrome bumper with deep concave grille. Two rectangular turning signals give the illusion that they are the headlights, but that's not the case. The headlights are hidden and are operated in a similar fashion like the Dodge Charger, slot machine style. And then there is the main party trick. 
What seems to be a round badge in the center featuring the letter T of Tucker is actually the hidden third headlight. In a similar motion, with the switch of a button, the third headlight is activated. The side is devoid of any chrome trim, but the rear quarter panel features two air vents to cool the once again rear mounted engine. Between these vents we find a torpedo badge, and at the end of the rear fender the coupe inscription. The rear end design mimics the front end design. Two square tail lights feature horizontal chrome striping that clashes with the vertical chrome bars that adorn the concave rear grille. Just above that we find a spectacular design piece. A separate, full-width air intake is placed on the trunk that follows the shape of the fastback roof. This air intake also features the third brake light. And on the brake light bar we find the Tucker name, completely spelled out. Now this is what I call design. The 1970s is a time of decreased fuel consumption and increased safety. Luckily, the new strict safety laws that were coming up were no match for Tucker, as they were already far ahead of actual legislation. Tucker cars always comply with the latest rules. And yet, some things didn't go as planned. When in the 1960s, the French car company Citroën introduced directional headlights, so not a third headlight, but regular headlights that could turn, Tucker asked them if they could also implement this design on his cars. Citroën refused. And then there was this guy called Malcolm Bricklin that made a direct attack on Tucker by releasing his own creation, the Bricklin SV1. Although the company was based in Canada, the safety sports car was mainly built for the US market and tried to make safety look sexy and sporty, something that Tucker had been trying for the past few decades. And although the SV1 was plagued with several setbacks, there was another guy that was a high executive from within the car industry that left Pontiac to start building his own very futuristic sports car. Tucker decided that he should release a limited edition series sports car that would be sold alongside the main series torpedo sedan. A sports car that would grab the public attention once again. He decided to dust off an old nameplate and concept car, the Carioca. And so this is the 1982 Tucker Carioca GT. The design department was obviously inspired by the latest of sports car styling, the wedge shape with its many flat panels and sharp corners. Many called it the DeLorean Part 2. The car rides on a special space frame and uses lightweight materials like an all aluminium body and other parts made from plastic. The engine is once again mounted in the rear, but is pushed so far forward that it could practically be regarded as a mid-engine layout. This time no V8, but an all-aluminium 3.2 liter V6. After the mediocre sales of the early 60s compacts made by General Motors, Tucker managed to buy much of the developed technology, like the aluminium V8 in the Oldsmobile F85. All throughout the 1960s and 70s, Tucker further developed this turbocharged engine. Tucker chopped off two cylinders in order to make the engine fit. At the front we find a very low and slim nose, that is completely made out of glass. Because this was a low production sports car, not all rules regarding headlight placement applied to the car. As part of the design evolution, Tucker dropped the center headlight and made the entire front end out of nine rectangular lights, each having a separate function. The whole setup was inspired by the Citroën SM, where the rectangular headlights were placed behind curved glass. If we talk about lights, all around we find more and more reflectors. Not only the mandatory front and rear reflectors, but also an extra set of reflectors on the rear bumpers. Also an extra set of turning signals are integrated in the side mirrors. The rear features European style ember turning signals for better visibility, as well as a full width third brake light installed on top. Bumpers front and rear can resist a crash up to speeds of 10 miles an hour and fold into the body. Inside, the interior is extremely high-tech. New is the so-called CCU, or Central Command Unit. This display is operated by just touching the screen with your finger, allowing you to see all kinds of information about the car. Through voice command, the car actually tells you if you're running low on fuel, or have low tire pressure, or when you haven't properly closed the door. The crash cushion system comes standard and is now called airbags. An extremely rare and costly option is the so-called radar distance control. It's an upgrade over the standard cruise control, where sensors are placed in the front bumper of the car. They read the immediate area before the car and adjust the car's cruise control speed if it detects any objects like a car driving in front of you, keeping a safe distance.
Let's make a huge jump in time to the present day. Back in the early 2000s, when several car makers prided themselves on their state-of-the-art hybrid vehicles, the Tucker Corporation quietly worked on developing an all-electric drivetrain. By the late 2000s, word on the street was that a Californian startup by the name of Tesla had similar and even more ambitious plans. Tucker bought out Tesla and used their knowledge and technology to further develop their own concept. The world didn't think much of it and Tucker took another 10 years to further develop their EV drivetrain. Until 2019, when Tucker announced something huge would be revealed. The next chapter in the company's history. And here it is, the 2020 Tucker Torpedo EV, available as a coupe as shown here, but also as a four-door sedan. This car is one, if not the greatest EV currently on the market, and Tucker has provided extremely impressive stats to show for it. The Torpedo EV has a thousand horsepower, and thanks to its industry-leading lithium metal anode batteries, the car uses its electricity very efficiently. It has an industry-leading range of more than a thousand miles or 1600 kilometers, but owners reported that the car is capable to go even further than that when properly driven. The car is loaded with all of the latest safety and software features. In fact, when it comes to autonomous driving, there are five levels available. If there were a sixth level available, it would only start to describe the autonomous driving that this car is capable of. Although the car crushed the old school established car industry in terms of its futuristic technology, competitors are on the rise. Cars like the Lucid Air, as well as some Chinese EV makers, are trying to get their piece of the action. But they still have a long way to go to get even close to Tucker. When it comes to styling, the Torpedo has a clean and understated approach. It's not a full-blown retro-futuristic revival by any means. As you can imagine, with today's highly advanced headlights, no third turning signal is necessary. But since LED light strips are featured all over the front ends of many cars these days, a subtle reference to the third headlight is present. The chrome ring surrounding the letter T lights up when the lights are switched on. Some chrome strips below are a subtle reference to the original front bumper. The side and rear are clean. New are camera mounted side view mirrors and of course door handles that are flush with the body, but pop out when activated. The rear features the customary LED light bar with the Tucker name spelled out. Once again, I like to pride myself with these alternative universe cars, based on the condition that the Tucker Corporation is still with us today, and is now some sort of Tesla. I like all the cars, although I'm not too hung up on the electric torpedo. It, it looks a bit generic and on the safe side, but as mentioned, I did want to create a retro-futuristic Frankenstein. Also, my apologies for never showing any interiors, you can create them in this game, but it's very time-consuming and cumbersome, so I'll leave it up to you and your imagination. But what do you think? Are these cars realistic, or would Tucker as a brand have gone bust eventually somewhere in the past? Let me know in the comments. <laughs>